Uh, today we will talk about the modes of propagation in different transmission structures. Basically, the transmission, transmission structures uh, can be of two types to broadly categorize one who have the mode of propagation which is as TEM that transfers electric and magnetic and the other category could be of the type which have the modes of propagation or the mode of propagation which is non-TEM mode. So we will see the both categories of transmission structures. In general I have given a name like modes of propagation in waveguides. I put the coaxial line, rectangular waveguide, circular waveguides, etc. all in the category of waveguides only because they are guiding the waves along the line. Now we'll uh, talk about the first category of uh, uh, transmission line or waveguide. The first kind of which is common type of line is a coaxial line, which you know it. The earlier to the coaxial line there has been a two wire line. There are also multi wire lines and the more developed lines are like maybe strip lines. All these lines come under the category where the transverse electric and magnetic mode propagate on the line. So what we find here is that the first category has the mode which is TEM that means transverse electric and magnetic that means the electric field and the magnetic field they are transverse to the direction of propagation. Here we have uh, given a figure of an equation line and uh, where the direction of propagation is shown as Z. So when an E and H fields are transverse that means they will not have any component of electric field or magnetic field in the direction of propagation. That means EZ is zero, EZ is zero and HZ is zero. So such kind of transmission structures which have E and Z zero are the structures supporting TEM mode. Please note that this mode of propagation does not have any cutoff. That means all frequencies can be transmitted, transmitted through this structure. Now the other, other category is of the transmission lines or transfer structures like hollow pipes having different transactions like rectangular waveguide is also example of that. It could be a cross section circular, it could have elliptical cross section and so on. So propagation of energy through these such hollow pipes also takes place but the mode of propagation in this hollow pipe is not TEM. It is either transverse electric or it is a transverse magnetic mode. Let us see the first case here, the transverse electric mode. That means what it indicates here is that electric field is transverse to the direction of propagation. That means there should not be any electric field component in this z direction. This is what is shown here that EZ is zero for this particular mode that is TEMN. That means here EZ is zero. That the electric field is not in the direction of propagation but the magnetic field could be in the direction of propagation. That's why I am indicating here XZ 
is non-zero. It is not zero in the case of TEMN mode. Later we will let you know what are these M and N suffixes which are put along with the mode. Now, the other kind of mode that exists on the waveguide is TEM MN. That means transverse magnetic. When we say it is transverse magnetic, that means magnetic field is transverse, that means HZ component is zero. If HZ component is zero, then we say it's a TM mode. But that does not say the Z component here would be, EZ component would be zero. So that's why we indicate here that EZ is a non-zero component in such a waveguide. That means there are two kinds of modes, one is TE and other is a TM mode. Now, if I see here for TE mode, the modes exist for all values of M and N. This M here indicates the field, half wave field variation in the wide dimension of the waveguide. N indicates the half wave field variation in the narrow dimension. So, as I said, all the modes exist in the waveguide, but the mode having both M equals to zero and N is equal to zero does not exist. So, TE00 zero zero mode does not exist in a rectangular waveguide. Similarly, in T modes, the modes having M and N, 0 and 1, do not exist. That this mode, this mode, and this mode does not exist. That means the first mode which exists is the mode TM11 in a rectangular waveguide. Now, out of these modes, now we have to see what is the most convenient kind of mode which is being used by the workers. So, there is a particular mode for a rectangular waveguide which we call it as dominant mode. Dominant, that's the most commonly used mode and this mode has the characteristic that it has the lowest cutoff frequency. This mode has a lowest cutoff frequency and this is indicated at TE10. So, for a rectangular waveguide, most of the time we use this dominant mode. The advantage for this dominant mode is, since it is having a lowest cutoff, waveguide dimension becomes small even for low frequencies. And the other advantage is you get a wide range of frequencies without interference you can propagate. Like an example for an X-band frequencies, normal test benches which are available in the laboratories having the X-band test bench that is the frequency is from 8 to 12 gigahertz. That means this entire range of frequencies can be passed through the waveguide without interference of other modes in a rectangular waveguide if it is operating in TE10 mode. Thank you.